praise the Lord on today. Certainly we are grateful and thankful to God for this chance and opportunity to come and share with Pastor Said and with Sister Charlene in this 12th year of appreciation. We are uh, elated again, as he said earlier, uh, when he called me, uh, I told him I'll be there. I, I, um, I have a an affection for him, not in a funny kind of way. But um, the Lord blessed me with two lovely sisters, but he didn't give me any brothers. And uh, when you find men that you can connect with, even when you don't speak to them every day, but whenever you have the opportunity to talk, it's always a fruitful conversation. Um, I have that every time with Pastor Said, and I want to thank him for that. Uh, I don't know what he's talking about, but when I'm at the gym, I'm working out. <laughs> He's the one walking around there with, with, his, with his bag on his shoulder, talking to everybody. I'm, I'm trying to get mine in. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get in some suits that he wears. So I'm working. I don't know what, I don't, I don't know what he's doing. We are grateful and thankful to God for this opportunity to come. I want to ask those members of New St. Philip, we shut down Sunday school. Come on, now. Right. So we can be here on the day. And I want them to just stand wherever they are. I see them all over. Glad to have them. Our ushers have, have, you know, they, they just go to people's churches and just take over. And, uh, but I thank God for this ministry because they're always on their post and we thank God for them under the leadership of Sister Renata Polk. Uh, our deacons, I have two, I think that's Deacon Jackson. Uh, just raise your hand, Brother Deacons. Uh, just I know you might have to leave before, but uh, come sit over here because I'm, I'm trying to put some more put some more logs on the fire. Holla at me and we'll, we'll shut it down real quick. Amen. Our seasoned saints who are here with us, if you would raise your hands over all of our seasoned saints. Always glad to have our seasoned saints here with us. Amen. Um, I, I don't have to, well I, I guess I will. We share the same uh, music team. Uh, Brother Robin and Sister Latoya, we share the same uh, music ministry, so uh, I really didn't have to call them, but I'm going to call them because I don't want them uh, to get jealous <laughs> because I called everybody but them. Amen. Last but not least, uh, the woman that I've been, I've been chasing, and, 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 and uh, I called her 24 years ago, but I'm still chasing. Hey Amen. Don't, don't shut this mic down. <laughs> Sister Clark, if you'll stand, she's here. Thank you for that. My daughter, Janelle, Janelle is here with us. Y'all y'all help her smile. Help her smile. It's, it's early for her. But uh, she, she's a senior in high school and you know all those activities are going on, so she still have some sleep with her. Amen. So we'll sleep in her. We'll try to work it out before three o'clock today. Amen. I, I, um, uh, I was told by Brother Robert that there was a song that I need to sing today. I, I wanted, I wanted my choir to come, but he said, "No, nah, real. They want you to sing." This particular song, so go ahead and strike it up. That's why he's smiling over there. If you know it, just help us say it. The Lord's been good to you. We can just make one more choir
you at some times and in some places, it has you where you find yourself not at your best. Yeah. Right. Can I be truthful with you right now? Yeah. My voice is trying to be a thorn. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's trying to close up. It's not letting me be as clear as I want to be. It's allergy season and right. you know how it is. You can walk outside and come back and your eyes are running and right. your mouth is, is dry and your nose is stopped up. It's, right. it's a thorn, but but I thank God for, for the thorn. Come on. Yeah. All right. All right. I've learned not to complain about the thorns that he placed in my life because there are some things that thorns, that thorns do and accomplish if we allow them to take their place. Paul in this letter writes uh, to the church at Corinth that he is in the midst of explaining and defending his apostleship. Because there are those who have said that Paul is not really who he say he is. All right. All right. There are those that remember Paul from when he was tearing down the church. Yeah. Yeah. But now he's sharing the word of Christ and they do not want to let go of what he used uh -huh. to be. Yeah. Right. Can I help you with some brothers and sisters? Don't be alarmed. Don't be surprised when you find people that won't let you be who God God is calling you to be. Truth is, we all have a past. Everybody in here, you were not born saved. And before you got saved, that was some stuff you did. Can I help you with it? That was some stuff you did that you were not so pleasing about. But thank God, he still saved us. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, while we were still sinners, Christ died. And because he died, we can now experience life eternal. But understand that that thorn that is in our lives, that thorn is there to teach us some things if we allow it to. Paul finds himself saying, look, I can share with you, I can boast, I can brag about all that I've experienced. I went up into the third heavens and I heard some conversation that I can't even come down here and explain it to you because you wouldn't even understand what was going on. But he, he understood what he knew and most of the pastor just talked about it. There's some, there's some of us, if we get two scriptures over the pastor, then we find ourselves saying what he can and can't do. Uh, all right. All right. Well, Paul says, so that I would not be exalted above better, so that I would not find myself thinking that I was more than I was, so that I would not find myself walking around with the big head. He said, the Lord gave me this thought. Yeah. Right. He placed it, a thorn, he says, in my flesh. And he said, then he gave the devil, he gave him right, right. to buffet it. All right, all right. And the word buffet simply means to rap with the fist. So whenever Paul would get out of line, what God was doing is say, get it, devil. Right. I know you're saying, now look, Jake, look, look, Pastor. Now, you come into Pastor Says anniversary. You sit here telling me that God would give the devil uh, 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 rights uh, to inflict pain on us. Well, all you got to do is go talk to Job. Yeah. Yeah. Job will tell you, man, I was minding my business. Yeah. I was doing it. Look, I was, I was sending up offering, not just for myself, but for my children as well. And one day, hell broke out all over my house in one day. I lost everything. Yeah, come on, come on. He said, I got news that my children had died. Yeah, yeah. All of them. Yeah. And in the same day, I got news that all my cattle was gone. Yeah. And in the same day, he said, my wife told me that I ought to curse God and die. And I had to tell her, wait a minute, baby, you're talking. You're talking like somebody told me. Job will tell you, God will visit you and he will allow the devil to do some stuff. Yeah. But you got to understand, it was it's God orchestrated. Yeah. Yeah. The devil doesn't roam and, and run on his own. Whatever he finds himself doing, he gets permission from the devil. All right. I mean, from the Lord. I know some of y'all saying, Reverend, uh, that's Old Testament. I can take your New Testament. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Jesus is standing after he, uh, he's standing and teaching. And there's a man who has legions of demons inside of him. Yeah. 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 Jesus calls the demons out of the man. And look, the demons can't function out. They rather function in somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you got to be careful. That even when you come to church, 
that you don't allow the devil to get inside of you. Right. Yeah. So, the, so the demon said to Jesus, bid us to go into the swine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Now watch this. They couldn't just leave the man and go in the swine. They had to get permission. Yeah. Yeah. So the devil doesn't do anything without God saying, go ahead. Yeah. So if you're in some trouble, if you're going through hardness, if you're going through some, some tough times in life, understand God may have permitted it so that he can teach us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teach us a thing. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so the question on the table is, how can the thorn yeah. be a blessing? All right, all right. And why should I thank God for this thorn? All right. Well, when you look at it in verse seven, the first thing you find is that this thorn it teaches us how to be humble. Yeah. Uh -huh. Verse seven, he says, "Lest I should be exalted." Above measure, uh, uh, through the abundance of the revelation, he said, the thorn was given to me, a message of Satan to buffet me. Look, Paul knew some stuff that would blow not only his mind, but our mind. Yeah, right. yeah. But God also knew Paul. Yeah. And he realized if I don't put this thorn on Paul, Paul would be walking around here thinking he Jesus number two. All right. So I put the thorn in his side and it's humbling him because not only is it humbling him, the second thing we find is not only does it teach you how to be humble, but secondly, it teaches you how to pray. Yeah. Yeah. You don't really know how to pray All right. All right. until the right situation hits you the wrong way. Yeah. Now, now we good at our little cookie cutter prayers at night before we go to sleep. Lord, now lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep me for I should die. Before we pray the Lord my soul that Lord, thank you for my wife, thank you for my children. Yeah. Lord, thank you for my job. We, we good at all that, but, but when the right situation hits you the wrong way, yeah, yeah. you won't just pray one time. See, because most of us will pray to God and we, you know, we've done it. But if it hits you the right way, you'll come back to the Lord before the day is over. Yeah. All right. And before you know it, you done pray to the Lord about, I'm talking to myself, you done pray to the Lord about that situation seven times. And watch this, he still don't answer it. All right. How you want him to. Right. Yeah. All right. He says it teaches us how to pray. Verse, verse 8, it says, concerning this thing, Paul says, I went to the Lord three times. That he would what remove it from me. He said, Lord, take it away from me. Yeah. That's around eight in the morning. Twelve noon, Lord. I'm here again. Take it away from me. Yeah. Around three in the afternoon. Lord, I don't mean to bother you. But you're not moving fast enough. All right, go ahead. Take it away from me. Around six in the afternoon in the evening. Lord, here I am, Lord, you ain't moving fast. You I'm talking about when the right situation. Yeah. When, when, when your children are in trouble. Yeah. When, when you're about to lose your job and your house at the same time. Yeah. When, when you got a when you got a health problem and the doctor told you, I don't know what we can do about it. Those, those kind of prayers. You don't just pray one time. I know you're strong in your faith. Yeah. I, know just, I know you're strong in your faith, but the truth is, when those problems hit you the right way, you don't talk to God one time. You talk to him until he decides yeah. to do something about it. So he said, I went to him, but then the Lord decided to answer my prayer. All right, all right. And the next verse he says, he said to me, my grace yeah, yeah. is sufficient. All right. When you're going through it, all right, all right. you'll find out that God's grace is really all you need. Yeah, yeah. When, when, when it seemed like the walls are closing in and the doors are not unlocking and the windows have been blocked and there's no way out, you can rest assured that God has some grace that he can give to you. Yeah, yeah. Right. So not only does the thorn teach me, keep me humble, not only does it teach me how to pray, but the thorn equals grace. Yeah. Watch this because every time the problem comes in your life, you can always rest assured that God will be right there. All right. All right. Now friends may turn their back 
answer. Yeah. Friends may not have the answer for yeah. it. Yeah. Family may not want to deal with it. I, I wish I had some folk in here yeah. Yeah. That, that knew like I knew. You, that you have some stuff that you can go through. Yeah. That your family says, I don't know why you're bringing that to me. Right. 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 Because I'm having just as many problems as you have. Yeah. You, you asked me for $100, I need $300. Yeah. Yeah. So we both in a bad fix. But watch this. God always allows his grace to show up right when you need yeah. When your friends don't have the answer, when your family don't want to deal with you, God will always step in and give to us what we need at the time that we need it. He says, I went to the Lord, Paul, three times All right. All right. and told him, move it, move it, move it. Yeah. But his answer to me was, my grace yeah. is all you need. All right. All right. And there's somebody in here that has experienced God's grace in your life. You're still in the midst of whatever it is you're going through, but his grace is right there with you. Yeah, yeah. You're still going through troubles, trials, and tribulation, but his grace is still right there with you. Yeah. It seems like you're not going to get out of it, but God has stepped in the problem with you, and he's holding you until he decides to bring you yeah, yeah. to bring you through. Uh, it equals uh, grace. Yeah. Yeah. But then lastly, uh, this song all right. makes you think different. All right. yes, it will. All right. Because after you have experienced God's grace, Paul says once you experience his grace, uh, and once you realize that he's not going to answer your prayer good. how you want it, uh, and you, all you have to rely on is his grace, yeah. all right. all right. Paul says it'll make you think different. Yeah, come on, come on. Verse, 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 verse 9, the B part says, Therefore, most gladly will I rather glory in my infirmity. Right. Look, he says, look, I'll boast about this thorn. Yeah. Right. Some people say, well, Reverend, what is the thorn? Most theologians say that it was his eyesight being bad. All right. All right. Some say that there, it was complications from all of the beatings uh -huh. that Paul took as he carried the precious cargo of our Christ. Right. And let me share with you, brothers and sisters, if you're ever uh, one who's carrying God's word, just rest assured that you have some enemies out there. Yeah. Right. But Paul says, in the midst of all of that, he says, I take pleasure in my infirmity. All right. All right. Most of us want the Lord to move the problem yeah. so we can get back to how we used to be. All right. But we yet have found ourselves looking at even though we're in the middle of that problem, God's grace is carrying us in. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I shout. I don't know where you shout, but I shout on the fact that even though I may have infirmities, even though I may not be 100%, I thank God for the 65% I am because he makes up the difference and he allows me to get to where he wants me to be, not by my power, but by his Great. All right. All right. So he says, I take pleasure. Well, verse 10. In my turn, I take pleasure in reproach. I take pleasure in needs. And I take pleasure in persecution and in distresses. Watch this. For Christ's sake. There's some things that you'll have to go through for Christ's sake. Yeah. That there's some times that you'll have to find yourself crying all night long for Christ's sake. Yeah. I know, I know what the new theology out there is. That look, if you if you find yourself calling on the Lord and telling Him what you want, He'll do it for you. But that ain't always true. All right, all right. Because Paul shows us here that I went to the Lord three times. Lord, move it. Lord, move it. Lord, move it. He didn't move the thorn. He just added some grace yeah. for the journey. Yeah. And there's somebody here that needs to be encouraged. And I'm encouraging you as well, Pastor, as well as myself. Come on. Yeah. Come that even when God don't deliver us from what it is we're going through, yeah. that he's able to keep us while we're in it. Yeah. Yeah. And when he decides to bring us out of it, yeah. Yeah. we're much better going through. Yeah. All right. So I'm here to let you know on this morning that you can thank God for the thorn. Yeah. Because I found out that the thorn yeah. will keep you up. Yeah. Right. And the thorn teaches us yeah. how to pray. Yeah. And the thorn equals 
people's graves. And the thorn will make you think different. I had a problem with that when God gave it to me because I really, I really had a problem with finding myself thinking different in the midst of pain. But it had an opportunity to see a young man in a wheelchair. He wasn't able to move. He wasn't able to roll himself. Somebody had to roll him in church and somebody had to make sure he got home. But whenever he showed up in the Lord's house, he would find himself making a, a funny frown on his face. And all you would hear is, ah, ah, ah. And some of the ushers would try and go and fan him and make him be quiet. And said, Leave him alone. You don't know what he's going through. He's in the midst of a bad situation. And when he makes it into the Lord's house, he doesn't look around with his arms folded. He doesn't look around with his legs crossed. He's not looking around trying to figure out when the preacher is going to finish with that sermon with all that hollering and sweat. He said, When he makes it in, he has enough mind to know that he has to give God a praise. So when he rolled him into the Lord's house and he turns his face and opens his twisted mouth and start making noise. It may be annoying to you, but it's sweet song to the Lord. That young man told me that whenever the Lord puts a thorn in your life,